Hi there everyone. Today we are going to be talking about texture channel packing. Channel packing means using different grayscale images in each of the textures image channels. You got your red, green, blue, and optionally the alpha channel. These channels are usually used to represent traditional RGB color data plus alpha transparency. However, each channel is really just a grayscale image, so different types of image data can be stored in them. Individual channels can be extracted by a shader to use them for particular effects. For example, the red channel for light, green channel for specular, uh, blue channel, and so forth. This uh, texture channel packing is mainly used in the game industry. Um, it's a technique used to um, save on memory. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do this in three different programs. I debated on going and doing separate videos per each program, but I figure we'll just get it done in one video. So I got the three main popular ones, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, and GIMP. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we are inside of Photoshop. Photoshop is fairly easy uh, to work with, and Photoshop is gonna be the easiest out of the all three of the programs. It, Photoshop's just the easiest on how to do this anyways. Um, so here we are here in Photoshop. I'm gonna drag in uh, a few textures. So I want the metallic, uh, the AO, and the roughness. So I'm just gonna drag these guys inside of Photoshop. And the easiest way to do this is we'll just go over to the channels and we will just turn off the channels and we could start with the blue channel and the blue channel is normally associated at least in Unreal. If you do the channel packing from Substance Painter um, for Unreal Engine 4, uh, the blue channel is the rough channel. Um, so what we want to do is we want to just come over here to the roughness of the map. We can press Control A to select everything and then press Control C. Then we will come over here to the blue channel, click on it, press Control V and just paste that guy in there. You could press Control D to deselect it. So now you have the roughness channel and the blue channel. We'll go back over here to the green channel, click on the green channel. We can turn off the blue um, and we can go ahead and come over to the metallic and let's press control a control c and we'll just click on the green channel and we will paste that guy right in there and let's go to the red channel now and we'll grab the ao and we will just paste that guy in there in the red channel we just turn back on the rgb channels and as you can see it looks a little weird um but when we Go ahead and save this guy. So you just go ahead and you can save it out however you'd like. Um, I'm gonna just save mine as a PNG. So that's pretty much it for Photoshop. You could come into the channels. Um, you could add an alpha channel and you could paste something else in there if you'd like to use these channels. The next program we're going to be hopping into is GIMP. So here we are inside of GIMP. Um, the way you work with channels inside of GIMP is a little bit different. Uh, you can't just go into the red, blue, or green channel and just paste in there. You have to decompose it. Um, basically what that does is it takes the channels and it breaks them up into their own um, file group where they could be worked with. And then you have to recompose them back. So in order to do that and to get to where we could work and paste things inside of the channels we'll need to go up to colors and then come down to components and click on decompose uh, we're going to work with rgb right now it's going to open its own little thing so now here we have the red green and blue channel we could work with so we will start with the red channel and the red channel is for the AO, so we'll just drag 
and drop the AO into there. And we could copy it. We want to paste this guy inside of here. So we will just click on Control C and then Control V. You paste it in. Uh, it'll be a floating layer here. We just need to anchor it to the red channel. So just press the little anchor down here. And now you have the AO into the red channel. We'll go to the green channel. Um, and we'll delete this layer here. So just delete it. And we will grab another image. Uh, and we will do the metallic. So we'll just drag and drop that guy in there. Uh, press Control A, Control C, turn it off, and then and then paste the guy inside. Click on the little anchor, anchor it into the green channel, and now we will work with the blue channel. So turn the blue channel on. We'll delete this layer, and we will drag in the roughness. Press Control A, Control C. Turn this one off, click on the blue channel, press control V, it's a floating layer, anchor it into the blue channel. Um, we can delete this layer now. So now we have our roughness, we have our metallic, and then we have our AO. We'll just turn these guys all back in. You want to go up to colors, components, and then recompose. Now, if we come back over here, you'll see that it looks just like the one inside of Photoshop. And all you'll want to do is you will just file, save it out as a PNG, and that's all there is to it inside again. Okay, I will meet you over in Affinity Photo. All right, so here we are back inside of Affinity Photo. Um, the channels bar is right here. Normally, uh, if you have a fresh install, It'll be down here. You just, I'm just going to drag it out so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Um, the way you work with channels inside of Affinity Photo is different to GIMP and to Photoshop. It's a little weird. I'm not too sure that I like it. It does work. It takes some getting used to, though. Um, I already dragged and dropped the images in here. So it's just the roughness, AO, and metallic maps. So what we're going to do here is we are going to come over and let's go ahead and grab our AO map and we'll just control A, control C it, and then we'll paste it in here. Now you'll see we have the red, green, and blue channels, the composite channels, and then we have these background channels. What we want to do is we want to click on the red background channel, right click. Um, we're going to create a spare channel so it's going to take what's shown here it's going to copy it and it's going to paste it down here for us to use later I'm going to rename this to AO and then I'm just going to go ahead and we'll delete this layer and get rid of it and it still stays saved here um, the next thing I'm going to grab is the metallic channel so we'll come over here to metallic control A control C and we will paste it down there. We're going to do the same thing. Just right click on the red channel, create spare channel, and we will rename this to metallic. And we will go ahead and delete the layer because we don't need it no more. And we will go ahead and grab our roughness channel. And we will copy it and we will paste it in here and we'll do the same. Just grab the red channel, create spare channel. We can rename this to roughness. Just like that. And we can delete this layer. Now you do not have to start out fresh like this. I'm just starting out fresh uh, just to go show you guys uh, how you can do it from fresh. But you don't need to uh, start out fresh. You can just drag one image in here and you can start from here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to create a new layer. layer. So make sure you create a new pixel layer. Um, and we will right click on the pixel alpha and we'll click on fill. I'm not sure why those channels were turned off. And 
so now we have a black solid pixel layer to work with uh, now we will go ahead and we will right click on the AO channel and we are going to make sure that we turn everything on we're going to right click and you need to make sure that you click on the layer first and then right click on the AO and then we're going to load it to the pixel red layer uh, it's only saying pixel because that's what it's named over here we could change it to whatever we want but I'm just going to click on load it there to the red so the AO is in the red channel uh, we will do the metallic into the green channel and we will do the roughness into the blue channel and there you go now we have the same image from Photoshop and GIMP and that's all there is to it you can save it as a TIFF a PNG um, and you can bring it into the program of your choice it was that easy um, now I'm gonna go over to blender and I'm going to show you guys how to use these side of blender you guys could use this in any software that you'd like uh, inside of unreal Godot unity um, if you guys would like to know how to do that just let me know and I will make a tutorial on that see you over in blender okay so here we are inside of blender um, let me go ahead make sure we're select on selected on the right object uh, let me take off this texture and let me create a new texture from scratch so I went ahead and pasted my my link to where my files are so we have all the files here I'm gonna go ahead and let's put this on rendered so you can see that we start with a complete blank slate here is that uh, pack texture that we made I'm gonna go ahead and drag it inside of here and I'm going to turn this uh, to non-colored data since we want everything to be a grade scale image we need to uh, we need to separate the RGB channels so we could use the separate channels so we're going to shift a and then type in separate and we're going to do RGB we're going to plug in the texture channel packed into the image here and if we remember right we set up R for the AO which we will set up here shortly the green was metallic so let's shove the metallic actually let's go ahead and let's plug in the base color first so you guys see what's going on so I'm just gonna plug in the base color to base color and now you'll see that none of this metal is shiny or anything because we need to hook up so we're gonna do green go straight into metallic now you'll see we're getting some metallic looking stuff here and blue was roughness so we'll plug in the blue channel into roughness oh there we go now we're getting some shiny metal there and then to hook up the AO we will uh, just go ahead and add a mix shader I don't know why it did that for let's uh, go ahead and delete that maybe I had both of those plugged in there anyways let's uh, grab a mix so we want to plug the mix into base color and then we want to grab the red channel and plug it in color and multiply and turn the factor all the way up to one so now you have your ambient occlusion in there and that's all there is to it uh, we could go ahead and plug in the normal map you want to make the normal map non-color data as well shift a and you want to add a normal normal map and plug normal in the normal and there you go now you're getting all the the normal details as well
and there you go that's all there is to it i just wanted to show you guys a little bit about uh, texture channel packing and how to do it in the three main softwares um like i said it saves our memory and it's used a lot inside of game dev and i thought this was a good tip to show you guys if you guys want any more information or to see any more use cases like how to do it inside of unreal engine or godot or unity just let me know and i will make a tutorial on it have a great day and thank you